Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about prescription medications used to treat leptin resistance. And let me be clear, because every time I talk about prescription medications, someone always thinks that I'm shilling for a pharmaceutical company. I'm not, okay, I have no affiliation with these at all. And in fact, I would recommend that if possible, you do whatever you can to treat your leptin resistance with diet, exercise, supplements, fasting, and so on. However, there are gonna be some of you who are listening to this who have moderate to severe leptin resistance who, who may benefit from the use of these prescription medications. So that's where we're coming from. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating people with thyroid problems, people with hormone imbalances, and of course, people who are trying to lose weight, which is what we're talking about today. So let's get to our topic today, which again, as I said, um, settles around leptin resistance, but specifically prescription medications that you can use to treat them. Now, before we get into these, it's going to get a little bit technical, um, but you understand probably if you have leptin resistance, why you need to know this stuff because it's very difficult to lose weight if you have really severe forms of leptin resistance. If you've never heard of leptin resistance, leptin is a hormone that is secreted by your fat cells and it's supposed to tell your brain to increase your metabolism to burn more fat. But if people have a lot of extra fat cells, your brain can become resistant to that message and you get leptin resistance, which makes it makes you kind of internally your brain think that you're starving when that actually is, you know, the opposite is true. You actually have a lot of extra fat. There's just no communication between your fat cells and your brain. And it creates a situation where weight loss is very, very, very difficult. Now, I think a lot of people listening to this, whether you realize it or not, probably have leptin resistance. So I'd encourage you to watch my videos if you're overweight, um, so you to figure out, so you understand how to test for leptin resistance, because it's actually very easy compared to some of the other stuff I talk about. Okay, so with that sort of out of the way, let's talk about, and by, actually, by the way, if you have leptin resistance, do me a favor, just comment in the below and say, yes, I have leptin resistance, and tell me whatever your leptin level is, because I think it'll be very telling for people both people who are listening to this who know about it and people who are listening to this and don't know that they have it, they'll at least be able to see, yeah, a lot of people know that this condition is there and a lot of people suffer from it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about one, two, three, four, five. Now these are five prescription medications um, which can be used to treat leptin resistance. And I should also tell you that most of these are used off label. If you go to your doctor and you say, hey, I, what medicines do you have to treat me for leptin resistance? They'll, they'll look at you with a funny, confused look. That's because most doctors don't even know how to treat it. They don't ever test for it. They really don't know how it interacts with your body weight and, and so on and so forth. So most of these are gonna be used off label, meaning they're not used for the intended purpose. But I'll explain that kind of as we go. Okay, so medication class number one is known as the GLP-1 agonist. Now, you don't have to know really what that means. I'll tell you the name of the medication, which I think is the best, and that is Saxenda. Okay, so Saxenda is a type of GLP-1 agonist, and what these things do is that they were originally designed to treat type 2 diabetes, so they help with insulin resistance and blood sugar, blood sugar. but they were found to be so effective at helping people lose weight that one of the pharmaceutical companies just rebranded one of their medications and called it Saxenda, and yes, it works incredibly well. It's probably the, one of the best ones on this list. Uh, potentially, it depends on your situation. It's one of the best, but it's insanely expensive, which is the unfortunate thing. So we're talking about a thousand bucks per month. Now, th this, is, this really is kind of frustrating because in my opinion, it's incredibly effective, but also very expensive. What it does is it drops your leptin resistance directly, helps you lose weight, and then it prevents the, the increase of leptin which often accompanies people who lose weight. So it does really two or three things very well. It also drops insulin resistance, which helps. So there are a bunch of medications like this. You can use some tricks to try and get your insurance to cover it, um, but you probably won't use Sexenda. You use different um, types of them, uh, of the GLP-1 or GLP-1 agonists. So that would be like Victoza or Bayetta or something like that. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but there are just know that there are some tricks that you can use to get your um, uh, your insurance company to cover it, okay? Um, and so that one, really, really good, really expensive. Okay, the next one is metformin. Now, metformin, really accessible, okay? So metformin is another one that was used to treat insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes. In fact, this is probably the go-to medication for most people. Like, if you go to your doctor and they think you have pre-diabetes or early-stage diabetes, they're gonna slap you on metformin and call it a day, okay? Now, that's good and bad. It's good because metformin has some benefits. Okay, and by, and by the way, metformin actually is in the press for a lot recently because it potentially has some anti-aging benefits. Um, we're not gonna talk about that, but you should just be aware that metformin has a lot of other uses. 
So anyway, back to what I was saying. Your doctor will slap you on metformin. Now, again, that's good and bad. Good in the sense that it may reduce your insulin and help you lose a little bit of weight, but if you don't do it with diet and exercise, it's really not gonna be that effective, okay? And that's why I think most people start metformin and they're like, I'm expecting to lose weight, and they don't. Or if they do, it's so minor because they didn't make any other changes, it's not very beneficial. So one of the benefits of metformin is that it's incredibly cheap, okay? We're talking free to $4 a month. I, no kidding, no joke. It's free potentially depending on your insurance plan to $4 per month. But the trade-off is it's not very effective. Um, but another bonus is that it's cheap and it can be added in conjunction with these other medications. So you can use, for instance, sex end up plus metformin and or whatever, you know, you different combinations included here. So metformin, really good. It does have show, studies showing that it can drop leptin levels directly. Um, so that's why I think it has some benefits. So that's number two, metformin. Number three is naltrexone. In fact, I just did a video on naltrexone talking about how it helps with weight loss and how most people think that it's used to treat autoimmune diseases, um, which it can, and it certainly does help, but it also helps with leptin resistance. And I talked about in that video how it can help drop leptin levels directly. I better finish that off. So it helps drop leptin levels directly, um, and that's how it can help reduce leptin resistance, um, but also help with weight loss in other indirect ways. Like, for instance, it can also help reduce insulin resistance. So naltrexone kind of hits a lot of different things that I really like. Now, the good news about naltrexone is that it's also dropping what I call the body set point. And so the body set point is kind of like the thermostat in your brain, which tells your body how much you're going to weigh. So if your brain says to, says to you, hey, we're going to weigh 200 pounds no matter what, it's really hard to lose weight because you'll lose 10, 15, 20 pounds. You go down to 180 and then your brain says, wait a minute, that's not my normal weight. It, my normal weight is 200. So it, you know, you'll lose your weight and then you'll just go right back up. That's called the body set point. And naltrexone helps lower that. It, and I think the, the reason it does this is because it's communicating with your hypothalamus and also impacting leptin. So naltrexone, uh, really good in that regard. Now, one of the problems with naltrexone is that, again, this is a medicine that most doctors are not willing to prescribe. Now, metformin and GLP-1 agonists, you can get your doctors to prescribe, but naltrexone was originally designed for um, alcohol abuse. And so doctors are like, what? Why would I use naltrexone? They, they don't quite understand all of these benefits. So it might be up to you to be like, here's some clinical research papers which show that it's super effective. Um, in addition, by the way, naltrexone is also combined with certain FDA approved weight loss medicines. So it's just a, that's just ignorance on the part of your doctor. I, I, so this, you know, I, I don't know what to say except for you need to bring them and kind of show them the right way if you can. Gently nudge them. I have a video on how to talk to your doctor. I'd recommend you look at that. But naltrexone, really good. By the way, very few side effects with naltrexone. Moderate side effects with metformin. A lot of side effects with GLP-1 agonists. The next one are SGLT2 inhibitors. Again, this is going to be confusing if you've never heard about this. Let me just explain what they do briefly. What they do is they help your body or they prevent your body from in your kidneys from reabsorbing glucose or blood sugar. So if you have high blood sugar and you have high insulin resistance, those are you know two conditions that tend to go together. This is really effective for that because you'll just pee out that extra blood sugar and if you drop your blood sugar, you're sensitizing your cells and your body to insulin, and that's helping your body treat the insulin resistance. It's also helping you lose weight. It's also reversing leptin resistance and so on. So these can actually be pretty effective. Again, a problem with these is that we're talking about using it off label again. And so this is again, used to treat type two diabetes. Um, and these do have some side effects. So it's not my favorite class of medicines. Um, the medicines that fit within here are Farxiga and Invokana. Okay, so these are the these are the names, the brand names of these prescription meds. But again, they do have some potentially serious side effects. So I don't love to use them, but I just want you to be made aware that yes, they can potentially work, um, and they can be combined with other things here if you're trying to you know figure out what works for you. So that one's number four, and then the last one is a really interesting one, and that's calcitonin. Okay, and in fact, really what we should call it though is sal salmon, not salmon, but salmon calcitonin. And calcitonin is a hormone that's secreted by your own body. But in this case, what we're doing is we're giving it to you. We're giving you salmon, salmon cal calcitonin, which is produced by, the, by that fish, by salmon. Um, and it looks similar enough to the calcitonin that your body produces naturally. But there's two things that make it different. Number one is that it's 40 to 50 times more potent than human calcitonin. So it's sort of like just dropping in this supercharged dose of calcitonin, which is altering the physiology in the way that we want it. And it does this by acting on amylin. Now, amylin is a hormone, again, if this is getting a little technical for you, don't worry, I'll just explain it in a really easy way. Amylin is secreted by your pancreas, and amylin helps uh, regulate your, um, your appetite, it helps regulate how much food you're absorbing, 
and other hormones which manage your, your body weight and things like that. So if you can influence amylin in a positive way by using calcitonin, you can drop your leptin level, you can drop your blood sugar, you can drop your insulin resistance, and that's gonna help you lose weight and treat leptin resistance in the process. So cal salmon calcitonin, I would say it's kind of moderate. I think, I wanna say it's about 30 bucks a month or so. I can't really remember off the top of my head, but it's something like that. Again, GLP-1 agonist, very expensive. Metformin, really cheap. Naltrexone is probably about 30 bucks per month. And SGLT2 inhibitors, if you can get a coupon, are about 20. So we're not talking crazy expensive except for this one. And unfortunately, it is the most effective in my opinion. Um, but it kind of just depends on you. So I want to hear from you guys. If you have leptin resistance, if you've used any of these, leave your comments below and tell me and tell other people if they work for you. Because I'm really interested to hear um, if they work for you. I've used these in my own practice many different times. In fact, I use them in different blends. I, use, I just sort of uh, cater them to the patient and the individual and figure out what they need. But I find great success using this. But again, it should always be used with diet diet, exercise, fasting, supplements, etc. You want to use everything together. Don't just slap on a medication and call it a day. You're never going to get to where you want to be if you do that. Okay. So leave your comment below. If you haven't already, make sure that you hit subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you'll get more videos jam packed with some interesting information like this. And otherwise I will see you guys in the next one.